Hello, I'm Scott Woodwiss and welcome to highlights of the 2013 Thrustmaster Formula Sim Racing World Championship. It's on to the streets of Valencia for round 9 of the championship, the European Grand Prix. Comprised of roads situated around the city's docks and shipping ports, mixed with purpose-built sections of track, Valencia has been hosting Grand Prix around its streets since 2008. Despite featuring a mixture of tight corners and high-speed sections, many people considered this to be one of the least interesting circuits on the calendar, but with FSR in town, there's always a chance that could change. Bono Huiz once again took pole position for Precision Motorsports ahead of Jack Keithley for GT Omega, with the impressive Jernay Simicic showing another great turn of pace to line up third. Peter Burlak would start fourth for Twister, ahead of Ivar Calames in fifth, and Morgan Morand headed up the hard tyre runners in sixth position. Mark Alberts put the second Ash Racing car seventh, with Samuel Lebert alongside him on row four, while Philip Pushka and Diane Kostadinov completed the top ten. Cyril Verdmuller made a return to top line action with GT Omega starting in 11th and Gergo Baldi filled the vacant seat at Netrex left by Patrick DeWitt's two-race suspension but could only qualify in 12th. There was a World Championship debut at Jasco Spain PSR for Adrian Rodriguez in 17th ahead of both Biocross positive cars of Disney and Van der Linden and Yannick Lapshan in the Pescara decided to start from the pit lane. To the race starts and Huis once again grabbed a clean getaway and headed the field into the opening corners while Simicic successfully challenged Keithley for second and Burlak briefly held off Calames for fourth. The only drama came when Baldi lost his front wing after clipping the right rear of teammate Kostadinov, forcing his race to take an early nosedive. There was more trouble a few corners later when Mark Alberts found himself understeering into the wall. The contact tore off his rear wing and as he began to recover, a hapless Moises Rondon slammed straight into the back of Albus' Ash racing car. Both drivers suffered terminal damage and were out on the spot. Further contact occurred down at turn 17 when Adrian Rodriguez left his braking way too late and ran straight into the side of an unsuspecting Zoltan Schutte, dropping the Hungarian down to 14th. Immediately, it was clear that Huis was planning to once again run away with the lead and the race victory. And as he did so, a five-car train began to form for second between Simicic, Keithley, Calames, Burlak and the fast-starting Cyril Verbmuller, who had risen five places from the start into sixth. As the highest hard tyre runner, Morgan Morand ran in seventh, knowing that the five cars in front of him would be stopping early due to their soft tyre selection, and all he needed to do was keep pace in order to gain an easy advantage. As the pack in front of him scrapped amongst each other, Moran settled onto the tail end of the train, but this would ultimately prove to be a mistake. With the six cars charging down towards the turn 17 hairpin, Keithley dived inside of Simicic for second. Contact was made, forcing a domino effect, which ultimately cost Verbmuller his front wing, but Moran came off worse as he half spun and crucially lost valuable time and positions as he tried to rejoin. Keeping the car running, Moran resumed in 10th, but his chances of challenging Huis for the win had been significantly reduced. Huis made his first tyre stop on lap 7 along with most of the other soft tyre runners and rejoined in third behind the twister pair of Burlak and Lebert with the former yet to pit. He didn't see them for long as Huis quickly disposed of Lebert before Burlak made his stop at the end of the lap and just like that Huis had regained the lead. Moran's earlier mistake had left him stuck behind teammate Philip Pushka and Diane Kostadinov. He eventually passed Kostadinov into the final corner to take fourth and just a few moments later was given a free pass by Pushka to help the Frenchman into a podium place with only Lebert standing in his way of his pursuit of Huis. However, by this point, Huis was already some eight seconds up the road, meaning Morand had a mammoth task ahead of him to close the gap. During the first round of stops, the dueling quartet of Keithley, Calame, Simicic and Burlak were still together and providing the Spanish fans with some incredible racing as they fought over points positions. Simicic remained at the head of the group until Calame's made an aggressive but well-worked outside pass at turn 17 and took 7th. Keithley lined up the Slovenian into turn 2 on the next lap and also made it past before Burlak did the same two corners later to push Simicic down to 10th. 
Just in front, Kostadinov was about to make Pushka's life a little more difficult as he outbraked the ghost speed around the outside of turn 12. Holding the inside line for the next corner, Kostadinov completed the move, but Pushka was less than impressed. Staying tucked up underneath the Netrex's gearbox, Pushka attempted his own outside pass move into turn 17, but on this occasion, Kostadinov locked up, resulting in light contact. The pair ran side by side on the exit, and with some frantic wheel banging, Pushka retook fourth position. The same sequence of moves took place between Keithley and Burlak shortly afterwards, but on this occasion, the Twister driver did enough to remain in front after his original pass. Morand made his first call to pit road on lap 14, electing to run on soft tyres for the rest of the race and the plan to stop three more times, with the majority of the field deciding four stops was the way to go in Valencia. Despite a quick turnaround, Morand rejoined once again behind Pushka and Kostadinov, but this time he made sure that both were dispatched quickly to reduce any time loss. Quis made his second stop shortly afterwards and rejoined it just in front of Morand, while all this left Samuel Labette briefly in the lead before stopping himself. With both drivers now on the soft compound, Morand was starting to prove that on overall pace he was quicker than Huis at this point in the race. Over the next few laps, Morand closed in on his chief rival in the championship and at times looked set to make a pass. But Huis's setup ran less wing than Morand's, allowing him to retain in front despite the ghost speed catching a toe. Morand made his second stop on lap 24, leaving Huis to continue to lead as the race approached half distance from Samuel Lebert. Morand rejoined in third, while Pushka ran in fourth just ahead of Burlak, who pitted a short time later. Kostadnov held station in sixth, ahead of Keithley in seventh, while Marcel van der Linden was once again quietly making his way through the field in eighth. Calames had dropped off the pace in ninth, and as for Jernay Simicic in tenth, he was making more stops than any other car in the top 10. He would eventually finish the race after making a total of six stops. By this point, the race had begun to settle down with battles down the field becoming few and far between. Peter Burlak closed down Dian Kostadinov and moved past at turn 12, taking fourth place, closely followed through by the pursuing Philip Pushka at the final corner on the same lap. Blair Disley then pushed the alien Gergo Baldi down to 14th with a straightforward move with the hairpin, before Baldi's part in the Grand Prix was about to come to a premature halt. On the following lap, Baldi locked his rear brakes at the exact same spot, sending him straight into the wall and out of the race with suspension damage. Shortly after, Pushka passed Burlak once again for fourth, just before the Twister driver made his third stop. But behind them, Kostadinov would end Netrex's interest when technical issues ground his car to a halt. A bitter pill to swallow for what could have been a top five finish. During all of this, Quis and Morand had made their third stops, with no change to the order or the gap between the two drivers. Lebert was keeping a low profile in third, also making his third stop and rejoining just ahead of Pushka. Burlak was now up to 5th place, with a substantial gap back to Keithley and Simoncic in 6th and 7th, and Calames further behind in 8th. Van der Linden was still circulating in 9th position, and Zolt Nagy held the final points place for fast and speed in 10th. The race was now heading towards the closing stages, and despite most of the front runners due to make one more stop, it didn't look as though the order was going to change, but there was still time for more cars to fall by the wayside. Adrian Rodriguez's pursuit of Antonio Collaret ended on lap 42, with a spin exiting turn 5, forcing the Spaniard to stall his engine. Danny van der Neet's engine then overheated and seized up under braking, forcing a spin and instant retirement. His teammate Zolt Nagy was embroiled in a fight over 10th and the final points paying spot with Yannick Lapshan and the surviving Cyril Vermuller. After running side by side for half a lap, Lapshan edged himself in front before Vermuller and Nagy made their final call to the pits as everyone made their final stops. Lapshan too pitted for his final stop a lap later but ended up slotting in behind Vermuller once again but retaining his place in front of Nagy. Lapshan quickly pulled away and after just three laps he was onto the back of a GT Omega and under braking for turn 12 once again moved past on the outside. Shortly after, Nagy suffered technical problems of his own forcing him out with just seven laps remaining. With the finish in sight, there was just enough time for one final change of position. Pushka had been battling Burlak all race long and was determined to secure fourth place and the extra points to go with it. 
with a great exit out of the final corner. Pushka set the Croatian up down the pit straight and through turn one, pulling to the inside in the braking zone and holding his line to complete the move. Taking his sixth victory of the season with another lights to flag performance, Bono Huis claimed the streets of Valencia for his own, with a win at the European Grand Prix, earning another valuable 25 points towards his championship lead. Morgan Morand had to settle for second place once again, knowing that the result could have ended up differently had he not become caught up in the incident early in the race. While Samuel Hebert delivered a silent but strong performance for Twister Racing, with third place and a step on the podium. Philip Pushka did enough in the closing laps to secure fourth place ahead of Peter Burlak in fifth, with Jack Keithley only managing sixth despite starting on the front row. Jernay Simicic's six-stop strategy left him in seventh position, but he was handed a 30-second penalty for failing to drive within the track limits. This promoted Ivar Kalamaz into seventh, who once again struggled to match the pace of his stronger teammate. Marcel van der Linden secured four valuable points for Biacross Positive with a trouble-free drive to eighth. Yannick Lapshan grabbed two points for Pescara in ninth despite starting from the pit lane, and Simicic was left in tenth thanks to his penalty. However, events were dominated after the race by the shock announcement by Morgan Morand that he will be leaving the World Championship with immediate effect due to personal commitments. One of the fastest drivers ever to grace the championship, Morand leaves FSR after 43 league starts, achieving six wins, 15 podiums and nine pole positions. Another win for Huis today extends his championship lead to 45 points over teammate Calamese. And with Keith Lee in third, Precision are on course for one of their strongest team performances in the driver standings to date. Moran's fourth place is now trivial, meaning that the likes of Pushka and Simicic will be left to uphold honours for Ghost Speed for the remainder of the season. A bad day at the office for Gergo Baldi leaves him seventh ahead of the suspended Patrick De Witt, and with Kostadinov failing to score either, Netrex will see Valencia as a weekend they would rather forget. The Constructors is almost a foregone conclusion, with Precision now on the cusp of breaking the 300-point barrier and a gap of 136 points over second place. Ghost Speed will certainly feel Moran's absence and will have to work hard to stay in front of GT Omega as a late surge in form for Precision's sister team could see them overtake. Twister stay in 4th, 30 points ahead of Brem GP, while the battles for 6th and 8th are now down to just a single point as Ash Racing get the jump on Netrex while Pescara have the edge over Biacross Positive. The next round is the Italian Grand Prix at Monza and you can watch that race live as it happens. Just head to simrace.tv on the 1st of September with qualifying at 4.15pm GMT and the race at 5pm. There's still time to join the FSR Fantasy League for the chance to win Thrustmaster prizes by heading to fantasy.formula-simracing.net. You can check out our forums at racedepartment.com for more league information, follow FSR on both Facebook and Twitter, and subscribe to this channel for more highlights videos, full broadcast replays and 60 second race recaps. We hope you've enjoyed today's highlights. I'm Scott Woodwiss and we'll see you in Monza in a fortnight's time for round 10 of the 2013 Thrustmaster Formula Sim Racing World Championship.